Hi, my name is Maureen Nathan and I'm here in my studio in West Dorset. Um, I was delighted to respond to Louise's invitation to do um, studio notes because if there's one thing I like talking about, it's my work uh, because it really does mean the world to me and um, at the moment I'm particularly excited because I am uh, working on a new series of pieces that I don't know quite where they're going to take me um, and which I always find very exciting. Um, throughout the, oh I, I should say that I uh, guess what I'm called is a multidisciplinary artist um, because I have uh, a variety of processes to my practice, uh, including painting, but not uh, entirely. That isn't my main focus. To be honest, I'm not sure what my main focus is, but I do like to follow the process that I'm in to see where it takes me. Um, uh, drawing underpins everything for me. But uh, during the pandemic, I have been concentrating on printmaking uh, in, um, a re, uh, using recycled uh, materials and in particular Tetra Pak cartons which uh, all the oat milk that we drink and various juices and things come in these cartons and I watched something on YouTube about how um, uh, you could use them to make prints at home and I thought well that's great because we really get through it and uh, it seems a shame to throw them away when I have the materials right here. And I will show you, um, this is a, um, I can, hope you can see that, it's an oat milk carton. And when you wash it out and open on the other side, you see it's got this metallic coating, which you can um, use uh, like an etching plate to draw into with a, a needle or any sharp implement. And then you can ink it up and put it through uh, your press. Now I have a large press, which I don't have access to at the moment, but I also have two um, little craft presses. I don't know if you can see them over there. Um, and I use those to um, teach workshops. Um, I teach, oh, there goes my camera. I teach drawing uh, workshops and printmaking workshops. And I take um, these little presses with me because they're easy to transport and not too heavy. So uh, anyway, back to what I was talking about, the printmaking. And um, I have just recently finished a series of prints based on um, the ceramicist Betty Woodman. Um, she was uh, an incredible um, artist, full of humor and great joy in her work, which I really always responded to. And when I first discovered her, I just thought, what a great sense of fun. Um, I think you might, you'll be able to see her online. Her name is Betty Woodman. Uh, I think that her daughter, Francesca, is more well known um, as a photographer who died very, very young, sadly. And I found that especially interesting as a mother of four girls myself, how Betty Woodman uh, kept making this beautiful, joyful work in spite of the tragedy in her life of losing her daughter. Uh, around about the age of 30. Um, so I have followed her career and watched her on, you know, talk about her work. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever be able to afford a piece of Betty Wood Woodman uh, ceramic, but I surely uh, aspire to it. But um, she is a figure that often crops up in my work because I've always liked the shape of her form and when she's in motion and the clothes she wears, because I have a particular um, affinity for checks and stripes. Um, lots of people call them grids. Now, I think that you can see behind me the last print that I've made using Betty. Um, I don't know if you can see it properly. It's this one here. And I will bring it closer for you so that you can have a good look. So here's Betty going in and out of her world garden. Um, this is a combination of prints and collage, which are, were all made using um, Tetra Pak. And I can show you, um, this is the original grid that I used to ink up and print the globes. This, um, when I talk about following the process, this was originally from a drawing that I did of a Bonnard um, painting with a red tablecloth in it. 
and I think that um, I, I get started by seeing something like that, like the tablecloth in Bonnard's painting, and wondering um, what I can do with it. Where will it take me? What does it remind me of? What am I thinking about? And often I'm not thinking at all, and that's the best time because it just works out the way it does, which I like very much. Um, so this was the tablecloth, and I put it in a lot of work, which I, sadly I don't have here um, because it's gone. Um, but this was the last piece that I put together called Betty's Garden, and this is going to be in um, an exhibition put on by the Printmakers Council, which I'm a member of and very happy to be part of. So that is um, a print and collage made with Tetrapack uh, in the studio by following my nose and the process. So on the back of that, I uh, started to do another um, uh, set of drawings. I saw um, a man um, not far from where I live here in the country, sitting uh, in a, on the bus, at the bus stop when I was driving past. And there was something about him. I just, I couldn't get over it. He, there was, I, I can't explain it. Anyway, I pulled over and I took a quick photograph and then went about my business. And the result was that I did a lot of, not really drawing from the photos, but I think, um, as Louise says, uh, drawing the way it made me feel to see him sitting there. Um, and now I'll show you um, what came from that. So I started initially just making shapes and trying to not think too much, just making shapes in the um, Tetra Pak, inking it up, looking at the negative space, trying to see how I could get different effects or not, or not trying at all, just seeing what came. Uh, and I found that I got all kinds of ideas and, you know, uh, just kept following my nose, as it were. Um, I like this one, this drawing in particular. I've called it Headache. Um, I got my uh, second COVID vaccination and boy, did I ever have a headache. But I carried on with my printmaking and here's some more from my sketchbook, which is along the wall. And I found some flowers outside and thought, oh, I could print those. And it made me think about spring and the man waiting for the bus. But was he waiting for spring? And we're all looking at our windows at the moment and um, so is he. So I decided to call him the dude. And these are prints of the dude waiting for spring. This one is using um, two colours of ink and uh, hellebores from the garden. I like the fact that they're fresh and the juice sp spits out onto the paper. So that makes me think about colours that I like and want to use in other work. And here's another one of the dude waiting for spring. And these sketchbooks are quite long, so it does carry on a bit. Uh, and here we are, a few more pressings from the garden. Something without the dude about spring. Some stitching and a print. I like textiles a lot and it seemed to marry quite well. Um, some experimental pages from my sketchbook, which I don't really think are going too many places, together with an old grid stencil that I had from another project. I work in absolute chaos, I think you might say, but uh, it works for me. And um, I must say, though, if I were to go and work like this in a print studio, they would kick me out. Uh, they're always very pristine and... Um, tidy and they have designated areas for things um but i don't i i, I just don't anyway uh here's my studio assistant remy um she's in training she's only five months old but she'll soon get the hang of it uh this is a, a board where i put things up that really catch my eye or are of interest to me uh, so i am currently working on uh these which i'm finding very exciting I couldn't get any panels, um, so I've decided to work on cardboard because then also I don't need to worry too much about how precious they might be or they might not be. Um, so I, uh, and there we are, you see there's Betty again um, with, some, with her pheasant. Uh, and um, this one is Hotel Midnight. 
because I did this portrait of um, the woman on the bottom left many years ago and found it again. Um, and her nickname on social media was Hotel Midnight. So she's in there. Uh, this is Stan, which is another little drawing I did of a baby boy called Stan uh, quite a long time ago, but I made a photocopy and put him in. Um, and uh, this one is um, called Levitate. So you can guess what that's about, rising up, striking out, who knows. It all just happens. Um, the chair is a dry point on the Tetra Pak, which I talked about earlier, which I had been looking in an old sketchbook and I found, um, I found the drawing that I had done, which is here. So I traced it onto a Tetra Pak and here's the plate after I'd incised it. Oops, where are we? There we are. Uh, and printed it yesterday. So I'm going to print some more and see what happens and where we go with that. But I put it in this piece because I liked it. And an empty chair always I find very emotional. Um, and if I don't feel it, I don't put it in the work. And I certainly felt that chair, which I had drawn a long, long, long time ago. Uh, there are two more pieces on the easel here that I'm working on, which I don't know what's going to happen. And I have an absolutely huge piece of cardboard, which I am going to cut up and uh, try and make some quite big pieces like this. So thanks very much for watching. And um, I think, uh, you know, this finding your joy is really just brilliant. And if Louise can help you find your joy, uh, I think that's really just one of the greatest gifts she can give you because um, I always thought I was going to be a painter and I used to get frustrated because I didn't paint all the time and I didn't paint as well as I'd like. Um, but I didn't enjoy painting, but I enjoy drawing and making pictures the way I make them now. Every now and again, I enjoy making a painting, um, but uh, once I let the idea go that I didn't really enjoy it and didn't feel like I wanted to do it all the time, um, my work has become quite a lot more joyful. Thank you very much for watching.